Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 Community Courts and Public Safety Virtual Conference. My name is Medina Henry. I'm the Director of Community Justice Initiatives at the Center for Core Innovation. We're thrilled to be joined by nearly 500 attendees from across the country, along with our international peers. The Center has always valued its role as a convener. Never better personified than when we host this biannual conference. The Bureau of Justice Assistance has been partnering with the Center to host this conference for a decade. We're pleased to have welcome remarks from BJA's Betsy Griffin, Associate Deputy Director, and Silas Darden, Deputy Director of Policy, followed by greetings from Courtney Bryan, the Center's Executive Director, who will introduce our keynote speaker. One housekeeping note before we get started. For New York CLE attendance verification purposes, any course codes embedded in the session videos aired today must be recorded on the attorney affirmation form you'll receive at the conference after the conference, please visit the Hoover homepage for additional CLE CEU guidance. Now I'd like to introduce Betsy Griffin. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm very pleased to have a couple minutes just to welcome you all uh, and then turn things over to my boss, Silas Darden, um, to kick off today's event, um, which we're very happy to be partnering with the Center for Court Innovation and many of you um, out there in our communities that really do the important work on the front lines. And I, I want to start, and I um, will probably say this a couple times, how much I appreciate your hard work. And I hope that today is useful to you and um, really um, gets you energized to go back out and, and maybe with some new ideas or some new perspective, um, be able to continue the important work that you do. Um, for me, it's really hard to believe it, but as we were preparing, we realized it's been nearly 30 years um, since the Center for Court Innovation started the first community court in Midtown in 1993. So it's been about 28 years. And the thing for me that's so nice about um, kicking this project off is I've really had the honor of my career uh, to support a number of projects, uh, you know, really over the last 20 years as a, a funder here at BJA and a partner. Um, but even when I was local, working locally um, myself to be able to try and do some of this work. Um, and for me, a lot of this is uh, work that connects the important ideas of bringing justice to our communities really in a very real way, um, engaging us as residents um, because we need to be partners in the solutions. We bring energy, we bring ideas, we have responsibility for pieces of this, and also working with and really empowering our criminal justice leaders and staff in this work to innovate with us and develop responses that meet the needs of where we are. Um, and also to bring key resources to communities that might be more challenged by ongoing distress and ongoing um, challenges around crime and needs for community residents and really um, respond to all of those by bringing it in in one place in lots of different ways. Um, in 1993, when, when CCI started this work, um, I was working locally in Baltimore. Um, I helped actually that year to put together um, uh, one of the early drug courts which to me really has a lot of cross cut because we often are also supporting the needs of folks that do bring substance abuse and mental health, uh, homelessness and other issues. Um, and community courts are really part of the continuum of care, I think, of helping folks that have those needs as well. Um, and so it's so great that we can kind of connect that work with our other drug work, court work at BJA, which again is another one of these longstanding projects that we have. It's very unusual in my experience for programs to really last over multiple decades and have support. So it's really great to be able to acknowledge the good work of community courts. Um, so I was able to take that experience and found myself about 10 years later at BJA as part of an ongoing partnership with the field and with CCI. Um, and we've been doing this work around community courts for a long time, not just in New York, but in other parts of the country and really to see it grow. And so it's so great to be able to highlight that good work today. Um, and I also just um, want to acknowledge, you know, that we've worked a lot um, with communities generally through our Burn Criminal Justice Innovation Project. And you'll see that footprint in things that we talk about today, where we really go in and build those relationships. Um, so important, the trust between law enforcement communities, having other partners and bringing those resources to the table. And again, community courts are such a good part of maybe one of those solutions that we find with our Burn Criminal Justice Innovation work. Um, really, these, there's been leadership at BJA and commitment to this work across multiple administrations. Um, and I've been extremely lucky and do 
uh, want to take a moment to just acknowledge Kristen Mahoney, who has been my boss for about the last seven years and a big supporter and advocate of this work that we do. Um, and now Silas Darden, who started a couple of months ago as my supervisor, but hasn't been in OJP, um, is, a, is also very much, and you'll hear him speak today. And we just want you to know we're here um, and very excited to be a part of this work. And also we want to acknowledge the leadership um, and very excited to have Courtney and the team at CCI really lead this work, as well as to acknowledge folks who, you know, have transitioned away from CCI in the last couple of years, including Julius Lang, um, who I know has worked with Medina. And Medina, it's so great to have your leadership now to kind of continue this important work that we do with communities. Um, so as we've done this work, we've really had a chance to think about ways that we can make sure criminal justice is fair. Um, we've worked with CCI on projects like procedural justice and just putting some thoughtfulness about how we um, are working with people in the courtroom, um, or communicating or looking at our policies and procedures and training, training um, to really make sure that every day we bring that quality to our justice, <coughs> um, that we really do engage with residents in many different creative ways, which takes time and is an ongoing process. Um, and for me, a joy of this work and, and so many people I work with in the field um, uh, that are criminal justice prof professionals like myself get really animated about these relationships and really being able to, to bring um, a new perspective and idea to their work and really sort of um, help accomplish for all of us what we, I think, set out to do when we entered into this field. Um, and part of the foundation for that really is this idea around restorative justice. And so I'm very excited to see that we're going to have panels on that. And I also just want to acknowledge, um, you know, not just sort of, um, there's so many ideas that kind of come under the umbrella of restorative justice, but in our work with CCI, um, I think you'll see as well the history of some of the partnerships and really want to acknowledge Native American leaders who have taught us a lot through peacemaking and other strategies. Um, we had a project a number of years ago in Syracuse with CCI, where we really, really trying to kind of continue to grow, grow, grow and on, that, on that work. So happy, so happy to see those topics are going to be there. Um, and so I, I feel like, we, as I mentioned, we're able to come up with creative solutions um, that are responsive to things that happen in our community, whether it's a group of people who don't um, have steady housing, people, like I said, who have substance abuse or mental health issues, um, supporting our veterans who might bring other challenges because of their time and service. And there's just so many great solutions you'll hear about today on all of those pieces, um, as well as you know, our definition of what a community court looks like continues to evolve. And, and I want to shout out um, for our colleagues at West, particularly in Spokane, who were able to sort of join with their local library and redefine um, and really build on our roots of using mobile approaches, which couldn't be more relevant, obviously, given so much that we have to do virtually um, in our current pandemic situation. So I'm looking forward to you all hearing about it. Um, I want to, I'm very excited to continue this work into another decade, maybe into almost 40 years. Um, and continuing to have these chances to come together every other year to share ideas. But I really want to turn it over to Silas, my boss, um, to be able to talk in a little more detail. And the only thing I want to close is, again, to say thank you. Um, please, you know, we want to hear your thoughts and ideas. I know, you know, in an ideal world, the last time we did this, there's the fun that comes with us all being together, meeting new people, sharing ideas, you know, the side co conversations, the coffee, lunch, you know, all the things that kind of come from being together. So please, um, while we can't do that, I hope the time helps refresh you. And if you have ideas, um, I know the team is going to talk to you about the, the different ways that we can continue to network and communicate and share ideas. But know that I, and, and in particular, Greg Terrain, who um, has taken on this project with me and does a lot of our other drug court work, um, are really here to listen today. Um, and we look forward to, to hearing from you and hearing your thoughts or hearing your thoughts afterwards and hope you have a good day. Thank you. Hello. First, I would like to thank Aaron Arnold, Medina Henry, and the Center for Court Innovations team for coordinating today's workshop and for their continued leadership in expanding the community court field. I wanna welcome you all to the 2020 Community Courts and Public Safety Virtual Workshop. Since 2010, the Center for Court Innovations in partnership with the Bureau of Justice Assistance has hosted this biannual conference. This conference as the country's only national training 
for community courts allows BJA to provide practitioners an opportunity to come together and discuss today's most promising ideas and pressing issues in criminal justice. BJA is committed to enhancing public safety, preventing crime, building trust with communities, and providing resources to jurisdictions to address stimulant, opioid, and substance abuse. CCI has made great strides over the years in creating the first community court in 1993. Located in New York City, the Midtown Community Court was designed to serve as an innovative criminal justice response to support the needs of the local community. Since then, CCI extended this idea to other New York City neighborhoods to include Red Hook, Harlem, Brownsville, and to other jurisdictions around the world. Today, there are more than 70 community courts operating across 23 states and seven foreign countries with many more in planning. Community courts can take many forms, from an actual building in a community like Red Hook to communities like Spokane, Washington, which hosts a community court docket in partnership with their local library. This evolution has helped jurisdictions to adjust their approach to address their local needs and resources. BJA is committed to providing jurisdictions with direct support through the National Community Courts Grants Program, providing funding for a new cohort of grantees every two years since 2016. With the newest cohort of seven being announced this fall, which includes Albany Works Community Courts, the City of Boulder Community Courts, Las Vegas Justice Court Community Court Enhancement Project, Olympia Community Court Enhancement, Reno Municipal Community Court, Skagit County Community Court Implementation, and the Spokane Community Court Expansion. Ensuring that community court grantees and practitioners have the necessary support to develop effective responses to low-level nonviolent offenses, BJA funded the Center for Court Innovation to manage the National Community Court Training and Technical Assistance Program. The program is designed to help judges, court personnel, and other partners plan, implement, sustain, enhance, and evaluate problem-solving justice initiatives that link judicially supervised offenders in drug treatment, alternative sanctions, and other services in order to reduce drug use, crime, and incarceration. We know that you too are working hard to implement your local courts and help them accomplish their goals through strong implementation of the model. We hope that the conversation you have today will help you to continue your amazing work. We also look forward to hearing about your challenges, needs, and how we can assist you as we plan for the coming year. Again, thank you. And if there are any ways we can assist you with this work, please let myself and my team, including Betsy Griffith and Greg Terrain know. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Courtney Bryan, Executive Director of the Center for Court Innovation. A hallmark of community justice is listening and responding to the needs of, the wisdom of community members in generating solutions that keep people safe, provide access to help, and strengthen neighborhoods. Now more than ever, engaging the community must mean including centering those who have direct experience in the criminal justice system, who've been arrested, spent time behind bars, been sentenced to treatment, navigated often complex and oppressive systems. Elevating these voices, this wisdom and experience is essential to creating the community-driven and people-centered approach to justice we are all committed to. This is why I'm so thrilled to introduce Khalil Cumberbatch as our keynote speaker. Khalil is a national leader in the movement to transform the criminal justice system and create a just society built on a foundation of safety, access, and opportunity for all. He began this work a decade ago after having spent several years in prison in New York State. Khalil currently serves as a senior fellow at the esteemed Council on Criminal Justice, a nonpartisan membership organization and think tank that serves as a center of gravity, an incubator of policy and leadership for the criminal justice field. He has served as chief strategist and is now senior advisor at New Yorkers United for Justice and spent time at the Fortune Society, an incredible reentry organization here in New York City, helping to lead their policy work. Khalil has a master's of social work from the City University of New York and frequently lectures at Columbia University's School of Social Work. Thank you, Khalil, for sharing your wisdom with us today.